Have you ever thought about writing a book, uh, been thinking, should I self-publish? Should I go with a publisher? Well, I have got an amazing guest for you today if this is something you've ever thought about. Hey, welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Gonna dream it, dream it, because someone out there listening. Everyone's got a voice to give and it's time I heard you whistling because there's no point at all. Oh, oh, oh. And dream small. Welcome to episode 106. It's a cracker with a topic we've never talked about before, writing and self-publishing a book with a special guest. And I can't wait for you to hear the whole entire episode. Thanks for lending me your ears today. I know you have lots of choices out there and I really do appreciate you making me one of them. I am, of course, the host, Jen Donovan, a marketing thought leader and social media strategist for small business and just an all-round small business lover, basically with one goal for you, and that is to make you realize that marketing needs to be a priority in your business. It's my number one business goal to have every small business that I come across make marketing a priority in their business because we want to grow. Marketing is what you will need to do. Just before we get started with uh, my guest today, I just wanted to talk to you just quickly about my new email marketing mastermind program that's starting in February and going for six weeks. Um, If email marketing has been something that's been on your to-do list for 2021, or maybe it's been on there for a little bit longer than that, then check out this program. There's nothing like it on the marketplace because it's not a, I'm going to sell you a program and then you'll go away and just do it. It's actually me helping you through for six weeks in like a mastermind setting where you get to ask questions and we get live calls and you have a group surrounding you to help you do this email marketing thing and it is so so powerful email marketing if you're interested um you can find out a little bit more or put in an expression of interest at um here's the link bit.ly slash email mastermind so bit.ly slash um, email mastermind. So if you're interested, go and check it out. Or And of course, you can put in an expression of interest. But let's get into it. Let's get into today's episode. I have Bev Ryan on the podcast. Bev is a book coach and her business is called Smart Women Publish. Um, as I mentioned in the episode, Bev and I are in a group called She's the Boss, which is ran by Jules Brooke. If you are a woman in business and you don't belong to She's the Boss, as well as coming to join the Like-Minded Business Owners Facebook group, go and join She's the Boss and introduce yourself to everyone. It's an amazing group with some just terrific women in there who are all about helping other women just like in like-minded business owners but anyway this is one of the most interesting conversations I think I've had on my podcast Um, maybe selfishly uh, writing a book has been something that's been on my mind for a few years now so I was really curious and you can probably hear that in my voice in my questions and in my answers and in yeah just uh, the way I am on the podcast. I am seriously interested in doing this. But maybe for you, writing a book is quite a lofty, air, a hairy, audacious type of goal for you, or maybe it's something to put on your to-do list for this year. But I'm sure whichever way it goes, this conversation with Bev will really intrigue you. Um, so let's get into it. Here's Bev, and we are talking books. Bev, I'm really excited to have you on the podcast today because we are talking about publishing books and I've never had anyone on the podcast talking about that before. But um, for those who perhaps don't know you or would like to know you a little bit better, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Hi, thanks Jen for having me. So I'm Bev Ryan. I'm sitting in Brisbane on a hot steamy afternoon. We just (laughs) had a clap of thunder that scared the bejeebus out of me. This is Brisbane (laughs) summer. Welcome to summer. Um, so I'm a work from home uh, book production person, I guess. So book coach and book producer, that's probably the easiest way to explain what I do. And book coach used to be a term that like, people, what? What's a book coach? Um, I work with uh, usually business owners who want to self-publish a non-fiction book because, oh, lots of reasons, and we'll talk more about that as we go. But So I help them start books and I help them produce books. 
Yeah. And um, like I was saying before we started in place record, full disclosure, like, you know, I think a lot of people who are in marketing have a book in them, um, I, you know, so I'm very interested in this conversation. Absolutely. Okay. But um, who can write a book? Well, it'd be very easy to say anybody could write a book, but yeah. it doesn't mean any it doesn't mean everybody will take it will find it an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, some people are kind of natural writers and love the writing time, the writing period, um, whereas other people kind of love the creati creativity of creating the book, and then other people love the marketing of the book. So you find people most times. Yeah, I guess there's those sort of three personalities involved. Uh, there's the solo lock yourself in a cave and write a book person and uh, some people love that some people really struggle they're with the that. ones we see on the movies aren't we the ones who yeah. take themselves away to a coastal village and write a book for yeah. days <laughs> yeah but and then there's the uh, the creative side of producing a book and they really that's I guess what, what my, where my strength is for people is that they might be creative but they just haven't got time to produce it because there's lots of little bits and pieces to putting a book together so I come in and kind of project manage that stage um and the then there's the marketing so the people who love the writing because they're kind of like be on their own writing don't necessarily love the marketing because it's kind of hey i'm here look at my book look, what, look at me <laughs> whereas people who uh don't who struggle with the writing oftentimes love the marketing because they just that suits them better so yeah so sort of different aspects to it suit yeah. different personalities but i think if you it's like anything, if you've got the right people helping you, you can usually achieve something that's important to you. But it's got to matter. It's got to be important to you. Otherwise, don't, don't do it because somebody else says, hey, that's a good idea. You have to really yeah. care about it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, in all the time that you've been doing book coaching and that, what's the quickest and longest time you've seen an author take to write a book? Oh, the writing part. Well, oh, gosh, yeah, that's. I mean, if you start to tune into um, people who do what I do, the book coaching part of my business is to um, help people plan a book and write a book. So you'll see programs that come up on Facebook or whatever, write a book in a weekend. You know, there's people who are paying lots of money to do programs like that. They go to a workshop over a weekend and supposedly write a book. I, they might plan to me. I mean, I don't know. I've never done it. But I know you can plan a book in a weekend. I think... Yeah actually to write a really good one might take a wee bit more than a weekend yeah um, so but there are shortcuts you can take I mean to write I mean if, if you're a, if you're more of a natural speaker than a writer that you can always um, you've still got to plan the book but yeah. then you might just record yourself speaking parts of your book and then get those uh, recordings transcribed you can then always pay somebody to kind of edit the transcriptions or you might do that yourself. So there's, you know, there's shortcuts you can take. Uh, but if you want to write something quickly, you've just kind of got to block out your diary, and not do much else you know, <laughs> for that period of time. Yeah. To make it happen. I know, I just, I know with the, I did the Key Person of Influence program years ago. It was one of the alumni of that program and publishing a book is part of their program. And mm -hmm. we were encouraged by our mentor who is Andrew Griffiths to, um to get a get at least get the guts of your book done in 30 days so their their model is 30,000 words in 30 days uh you know they'll be rough this is really a brain dump in 30 days mm. then after that you work you know you finesse that after that yeah. Mm, okay because I could I could just I guess imagine some people would uh, once they sat down to do the process it might come fairly naturally to them and the words will just kind of you know fall onto the page and then other people would probably um yeah find it a little bit hard to articulate but that's where speaking could come in for yeah. sure uh, and certainly technology allows us to do that these days to yeah, dictate definitely. uh you know back in my law days when I had my little dictaphone and I would dictate into it and then somebody else would would transcribe it without the ums ahs and don't worry about that don't you put that in <laughs> but you know you used to have to go into that as well so um but you know we've got ai these days that does that transcribing so yeah. that's really interesting mm. um, even even in that scenario that you mentioned you've still got to spend time on the planning I and mean, that's really critical mm. before you start any writing you have to have mapped out and you know it's like and you go back before that you really have to know why you're writing the book. You know, why are you writing this book? Um, what do you want to achieve with the book? And, and most of my clients are business owners. So 
they the book has a purpose within the business mm -hmm. uh, and that's what you need to map out as like and you know you've got a marketing background so it's really one of your marketing tools really mm. um, but it should not look like it's a it's not a brochure it's not a you know it's it's not a sales thing it's a it's a book with your intellectual property your knowledge your experience whatever so it has to be a standalone valuable product um but it has to be planned out so you wouldn't start if you start to write before you plan then you, you just write yourself into a corner and yeah okay. write a whole bunch of stuff that's not very useful because it yeah. doesn't have a purpose or an audience or whatever. A flow yeah, yeah. so I, I guess that leads kind of into the question I was going to ask about um you know if people had an idea for a book where do they start so I'm gathering from your answer they start kind of planning your purpose and planning mm. the why and planning out yeah. a book yeah so I guess it, all the decisions it's, it's a really interesting process because it really makes you um reflect on you know what's my business who am I, you know, who am I um, trying to target? Who are my ideal customers? And what someone might find that when they do that analysis, they think, okay, well, actually, I'd like to change the direction of my business. So I'll write, so then they would write their book for what they want their business to be or who they want their business to kind of move or, you know, it might be a tangent they want to go. So just because somebody might work, with um, you know, their perfect client might be, you know, for example, lawyers at the moment. It doesn't, they might, well, if they don't really like doing that, well, don't write a book for lawyers because <laughs> you're going to be stuck there, you know. Um, you might think, well, you know, I like working with lawyers and I can help lawyers market their practices, but I'd rather work with somebody else. So you might write a book about how to market your business, but it may not be for lawyers. So, yeah, you've got to think through, well, Forward, forward plans they will yes. I'm going to write you know, invest all my time and a certain amount of money on producing a book the book's going to take them in a direction that they want it should take them in a direction they want to go yeah. so there's all you know that's the first step so then once they sort of decide well who who is the book for really break it down well why would some why would that person want to read my book and because the book's not about you you know if you're writing a book it's not about you at all it's about the reader and understanding them and taking them on a journey that they want to go on and providing a solution they want to find. Because, you know, if you think about ourselves, if we go into bookstores and buy nonfiction books particularly, um, we buy them because they're going to help us do something or they're going to give us an answer or they're going to inspire us or show us what to do better. So that's what you should aim to write when you write a book. Um, not a business card. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like I, I know, like you know, for my, I guess, thinking with a lot of marketing and that is start with the end in mind. So that's kind of what you're saying yeah. is, you know, start yeah. with the end in mind and, you know, and what you want to get from the book and yeah. work backwards. But certainly... Um, I have heard from a few people that have written books that I know in my life that, that they aren't necessarily a profit driving um, part of their business, but more of a, uh, in quotation marks, glorified business card. And I'd just love to ha ha hear your thoughts on that because that seems like a, a very big business card and a lot of energy into a business card. Is that is that just their their thought process is wrong around that or is there some truth in that well i i think the phrase is just a business card i think that diminishes the value and the importance of a book and and the, what a book can do for you and i, I know why people say that and i've actually heard that uh, that some people have promoted what i do in their business and like i'll help you write a book no one might ever read it but it's a, it'll be a, like a business card well, Again, I mean, if someone wants to do that, fine, go do it. But that's not what I, you know, I don't want to work with people like that. Yeah. I want people to do, who are putting some value into their book. Um, the question about profit, no, because the, um, the clients I work with are business owners, the book itself, they may not make a huge amount of profit from the sales of their book. If they're thinking that their book is a product that will bring extra revenue back to their book, just from book sales that may well not happen but mm -hmm. if they you know position their book as a tool to attract people back to their business who will then transact with them for 
higher valued products and services, then yeah, definitely this prof that's where the profit's going to be. Mm, okay. That's why it's important when you plan the book to make sure that book is an integral part of a bigger picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I guess that kind of interestingly leads me down the line of just sort of thinking, what does a book cost to get published? Do, mm -hmm. do you have any idea? Like, I know we're going to talk very general numbers, but yeah. I literally have no idea whether it'd be a 50,000, a hundred K sort of investment or, or what that sort of investment would look like. Yeah. So, okay. So I'll just use a few averages, which might help people who are sort of interested to know. Um, let's use, so a 40,000 word book. And you know, books, business books or nonfiction books don't need to be huge. Uh, I think more and more people are tending to appreciate shorter books, because mm -hmm. particularly books where they can just kind of open the contents page and the contents page should tell them very clearly what's in this book, boom, 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 and they can just jump in and get what they want out of the book. So let's say 40,000 words. Now, the in terms of production, the next step there would be editing. So editing of 40,000 words, you've got to be willing to invest, you know, a couple of thousand in good editing. Mm -hmm. um, then the production side is a full, uh, sorry, full colour cover. And so in terms of getting, and the book covers got to be, it's got to be well designed, but it's, mm. Yeah, it's really something worth investing in. So you might be paying up to $1,000 for good design, which sounds a lot with just, hey, it's just a book cover. But, you know, if you go and walk through a bookstore and look at book covers. Yeah, what grabs your attention, what yeah. doesn't. Uh, yeah. I, you know, it's uh, definitely a very important yeah. part, I would say. And there's some, look, I'll just hold this up. It's probably going to be in reverse. But you can see from that, that's just text. Yeah, you know, Andrew Griffiths, who was our um, mentor in the Key Person of Influence program. This is his brand new book. Now, that, that's a brilliant cover. And it might say, okay, it's just text. But that text is so balanced and beautifully placed and thought, thought out in the cover. So, you know, we're not talking necessarily about fancy graphics or images mm -hmm. or whatever. But it's, you know, it's a, it's a classy cover. <laughs> it's, yeah. it, it's, it's really classic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so your book cover design, you know, up to a thousand, maybe, and there's some designers charge a lot more than that, some charge a bit less than that. But so then the next element is page layout. Um, that's really important. Uh, the, the getting the quality layout, it's got to look good, it's whatever. So we're still talking about 40,000 words. So that might be between, I don't know, 700 to 1,000, 2,000. It, it, look, honestly, the prices yeah. vary a lot. Um, so then your main cost anyway editing cover design page layout then after that um your book goes off to print or it becomes an ebook or both most of my customers do both print books and ebooks yeah. so that's part of my service as well um so an ebook is different to an audio book yes different. Yeah. yeah with an audio book you would pay somebody who's very good at who's got a proper um sound studio and you mm -hmm. you could either read your book and have it recorded and then that has to be edited or you might pay someone else to read it and have that edited so that's another cost yeah. I don't you know that's not something I do I certainly know people who do it and that's yeah. usually a few thousand dollars yeah okay to produce an audio book well, with printing um, I will normally refer my customers to a printer or use an online self-publishing platform called Ingram Spark which is Really, I, if somebody doesn't know much about self-publishing, I would say just go and have a look at Ingram Spark. It's spelled I-N-G-R-A-M-S-P-A-R-K. They've got a, a very comprehensive service. So they're actually printers and they also um, distribute e-books through book retailers. They, just, they distribute print-on-demand books to book retailers and also e-books to mm -hmm. book retailers. So mm -hmm. I will upload my customers' files to their system and, um, for example, they, they will then put someone's books up online in various places. If somebody purchases a print version of someone's book, that print order goes back to Ingram Spark. Ingram Spark actually physically prints the book and posts it out. 
So it's, yeah, okay. Yes, which is older, good for uh-huh. authors not to have a thousand books in your house waiting yes. for sales. Uh, so it kind of takes that element out of it. Not to mention that you know it's probably not something you want to do. That uh, you know twenty dollar an hour job waiting for the orders to come in and that. So yeah, yeah that's no, a great amazing. option. And another beauty of that is you. So your book can be sold off other people's platforms like Amazon and Booktopia, mm. whatever. But you, if you wanted to have total control of your book and maintain all um, profits from your book, you can sell it off your own website. Mm-hmm. So the orders come into your website and all you need to do is then go into Ingram Spark yourself and put in an order for one book. But it can be printed depending on where that person is. If they're in America, the book would be printed in America mm-hmm. and distributed and likewise the UK, Australia, and I think there's one in Asia somewhere. So you can take all the orders, keep profit, go in and send a book off. I did one recently for a client that was in the UK. So you know, I just said print the book in UK in the UK and just paid a, a you know a minimal amount for the book and so it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's a really great I, I will definitely um put that in the show notes, a link to Ingram Spark in yeah. the show notes for people to have a definitely. bit of a look at. Um yeah. for sure. So I guess for anyone who might be listening who thinks, you know, writing a book might be on the top of their list for 2021. Maybe they learned something in 2020 they can't wait to share with the world. Um, what's the what are some tips around, you know, what they should do? How do you get it from your goal list? Um, you know, mm-hmm. and and start. I guess the process yeah the planning you make time to plan it now you know obviously that's something I do and I work with people either as individuals or occasionally I run group programs but Mm -hmm. um, I mean you can there's so much information out there but sometimes there's so much information about anything that it's really confusing yeah but book planning is the the first part of the process and as I said earlier it's really about well where do I want this book to take me? You know, you might, and a lot of people make a big do a big deal about the book launch, and then they can like six months later, it's like they haven't, they've never written a book because they kind of feel like, well, I launched it and that was it. Well, the book, you know, the life of your book, if it's planned and written thoughtfully, the life of your book could be years, years mm-hmm. and years, and rather than a big launch and a frantic activity at the start, just map out. Um, sort of slow monthly activity so your book kind of is perennial um so that plan then when you sit back and plan your books okay well if my book's going to be something i can use in the next one two three years what do i want that to do for my business so that's really where you would start and write the book for exactly the ideal client you want to work with um don't think well my books are everybody or everybody needs to know that yeah. like, you know, like you've got a marketing background, you know, you market to your niches. And yes, so you might even you might do your first edition of your book, you might do book one, um, you know, how to market a legal practice. And then you can always next year do how to market a a medical practice, but most of the context going to be similar. So yeah, so that all that planning is really, really important. Um, Yeah. 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 What are some do's and don'ts when you're writing books? Like, uh, especially the don'ts, maybe, um, you know, what does that look like? Do you find that people, um, that some people can make similar mistakes as they're going through besides, mm. well, maybe one of them is they just don't plan well enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of them is that they, they don't plan, pro- they don't plan with the right um, things in mind. They think, well, what are, sometimes this is some people, they might think, well, what do I know about that topic? So this is what I know. So I'll just do chapters one, two, three about all the things I know. But that may not be what a reader really wants. A reader's looking for a solution to the problem they've got. So Mm -hmm. that's, you know, switch your mind from that. It's not about your book. It's not about you. It's about, it's for the reader. Mm -hmm. You're asking them to invest their time or their, and their money in, in your book. So give them a, give them an experience. It's like going to a movie, you know, if a movie grabs us, we love it. Yes. The movie's like, yeah, guys, you're treating me like an idiot here. I know this. <laughs> I'm never going to get these yeah. two hours back. <laughs> yes, well, you don't want one of those books. Um, yeah, and also that's, I guess that's another point that give your, like with your readers, decide if, uh, am I re- writing this book for beginners? Because that's a different kind of book. 
than mm-hmm. if you're writing your book for someone who's got an advanced knowledge. Mm-hmm. So just really identify your readership even in that way. Like, so if you're writing a book for people with an advanced knowledge of something, though that's going to determine a whole, whole lot of different content, different language, giving people credit for an understanding they've already got. Mm-hmm. Um, the big one is oh, everybody everybody needs it. Just if you hear yourself saying, yeah, oh, but everybody would read this. No, no they won't. It's like, <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> and that's no, not, it's not a problem. It's not a criticism. It's just that's yeah. the world. You know, it's reality. Yeah. Um, another, uh, a lot of people get discouraged. Like self-doubt is a big one because it's a big deal. Writing a book is a big deal. Apart from the amount of work it takes to put it all together. It's going public. It's like putting your artwork on display for the first mm. time or showing a film that you've made for the first time. It's a very public um, declaration. And once the book's out there, you really can't get it back. It's like <laughs> it's out there. Um, so self-doubt is going to rear its ugly head from time mm-hmm. to time. So yeah. it's dealing with that, um, just reminding yourself that you do know a certain amount. And, and I guess... I've used this little phrase in my book coaching um, courses for authors or about to be authors. Like this book is, I feel I remember it now. Um, like basically say this book is my experience about this topic or this book is, you know, Bev Ryan's um, version or Bev Ryan's account, account of how to publish a book. So, that you know, I've written a book called Smart Women Publish, which is really sort of a how-to guide for books. And um because that's kind of my version of it. There's plenty of other books out there like that. Now, mm-hmm. I could, you know, we could all do our heads in by thinking, oh, my God, they've done such a better, you know, their, job, their book's better or whatever. Mm. But they're different people. So, you know, just. No, that's just right. Different. No one does you like you. So. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know, you know, we were talking earlier about, um, you know, the right clients come to you. If you are true to who you are and present yourself to the world, whether it's on podcast like this or in your book or whatever if you just kind of open up and be who you really are then the right people will come along so your book you don't you don't use your book to set up this false persona that's not you because they're not. Yeah. um so that's another one and i think the other big mistake people make is and again not everybody but yeah you know, some people will say oh, we'll try and cut corners with the production costs you know, they, they won't want a quality professional book as an outcome, but the only way you can get that is if you have professionals involved in the production of it. So, you know, pay a, a proper editor um, and even, you know, and also proofreading on top of that as well. Proofreading is really critical. So editing and proofreading and um, pay a good designer. Um, Mm. invest yeah. invest in what you're investing invest. in I guess yes. isn't it invest in an outcome yes <laughs> absolutely absolutely yes. um this has been a really fascinating chat mm. uh, I just think book publishing I, I I know we are in a group uh, she's the boss that's run mm. by Jules Brooke and there's yeah. a gorgeous Naomi who is in there who actually has a book all about kindness mm-hmm. and um I was wanting to buy that as a gift and she we would uh just kind of talking about how it's available on Amazon and um, Jimix and that sort of thing, but she hasn't got it on her website. So the difference between self-publishing and publishing with a publisher, um, can you just sort of enlighten us a little bit? Because I have kind of always been of the opinion that self-publishing was perhaps um, something you did when your book was rejected from an editor, but years of wisdom or you know the last few years I've learned that that's really not true self-publishing is actually a really good option yeah yeah definitely self-publishing gives you total control so you know we talk about indie music and indie films or whatever um I have a few stories here I got into publishing with my own magazine so this is 1997 I I had a bit of a career crisis and I used to be a teacher and I didn't want to teach anymore I, I had no idea what I wanted to do and I just did a few career profiling tests and tools and reading and came up with the idea of publishing a magazine mm-hmm. and when I kind of analyzed all the steps that go into publishing a magazine and now publishing books I thought I actually each of those was really appealing to me now I could have gone to a publishing company and asked permission to do that and said hey look at me um, would you let me do it 
under your, you know, with your under your banner, which is like people's appealing to a publishing company with their books, saying, yes. "I've got this lovely product. Will you, will you look after it and take care of me and pay for it and whatever?" Um, you at the mercy of them, you know. So I, I mm. said, "Hang on, I can publish this magazine myself." So in 1997, I figured out how to self-publish a magazine, and that was not very common back then. Mm. Uh, and I, I got a distribute, I got a co uh, contract with a distribution distribution company, which was critical. I got they kind of liked my idea. They said we'll distribute it. So then I, I was fine. I just it was my magazine. Um, interesting called Work From Home, which is a really much more topical today than yes. 1997. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm ahead of the time, guys. Um, anyway, so with books, I think self-publishing began for the, probably a similar reason. Uh, technology improved. People realised, oh, I don't have to wait for a publishing company to give me permission to do this. I might actually do this myself. And that's how independent publishing of music or whatever that has happened due to technology. So I, I guess the benefits of, well, some see the benefit of going through a publishing company, a traditional publishing company, is that they pay for the production of the book. But because they're paying the bills, they get the final say in everything, and which is fair mm. enough, is, you know, they've got to make mm -hmm. a profit. So they may not like your idea of a title, so they'll change it. They may not like your idea of a book cover, so they'll change it. They take a long time to produce a book. Um, you might have to wait six months or, or more for a book to actually be produced, even you know, for when they take your manuscript. Um, so they have a lot of control. So then they will control how the book's marketed because it's their product, basically. Mm -hmm. You get a little percentage, you, know, you get a royalty from it. Um, whereas, you know, self-publishing, it's all your baby. So. <laughs> Once you pay, I think that's why it's important to invest in the quality editing and production because then your book is competitive and mm. equal to traditionally published books. Mm -hmm. If you don't invest in that, you'll always look like kind of the, the cheaper version of a traditionally published book. Mm. So yeah. I always tell my clients, so that the benchmark is uh, going to a really good bookstore uh, or the airport bookstore if we're traveling and have a look at the business books on the shelf there that's your benchmark you know yep. yeah yeah mm. Okay, interesting. And um, we'll be all looking at book covers with different lights after listening to this, I'm sure, and working out what we do and what we don't like. Bev, I've really enjoyed chatting to you about publishing and books. But before we leave, have you got any parting pearls of wisdom, something we haven't quite touched on or anything you wanted to leave us with? No, I think the main thing is um, with people is, is if it's something you really want to do, you're just kind of going to make time for it. Um, I know I've just published a book for a client and she's been wanting to publish this book for uh, year, oh, two or three years and she really only did it because she made time for it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's like, it, it's got to become a priority. Now, it's great timing, 2021 coming up. <laughs> make that your book year. If it's really something you're burning to do, you have to make it a priority and uh, and don't doubt yourself. You know, there might be times where you kind of, you know, feel a bit well I'm not sure what I'm doing but just know you can do it like you know if you're running a business you can do it you know it's it's another thing you can do you yeah. you, you know how to do things so yeah. even if you just sometimes have to ask somebody say hey I'm not sure what to do next people will tell you people will help you so you know so yeah. make it a priority and and yeah. figure out how to do it as you go yeah. yeah. And look, I, I think that that is no different to anything else you want yeah. to achieve in life or your businesses. It's just got to get to the top of the priority list and yeah. then you can certainly do it. But Bev, if someone's thinking, Bev, I'm ready. I need to do this. 2021 is my year. What's the best way that they can get in contact with you and learn a little bit more about what you offer? Yeah. I, my website is smartwomenpublish.com. And I'm also easy to find on LinkedIn, just Bev Ryan. I'm in Brisbane, so if you just do a narrow search, Bev Ryan Brisbane, but smartwomenpublish.com or um, LinkedIn or Facebook, whatever you So anywhere there, you'll find me. Beautiful. I'll put those um, links in the show notes. Um, thank you so much for coming on. It's been such an interesting conversation and I'm sure my audience will be, um, perhaps someone might find a spark that they didn't quite know yeah, was there. Yeah, and just so. reach out to me. I, you know, I'm happy to do quick chats and conversations. So I'm, that'd be delightful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks okay. again, Bev.
you're welcome. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed that chat with Bev. I certainly did. Um, all Bev's contact details are, of course, in the show notes, which you can find at all the W's, socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 106. Um, and just a reminder, of course, about my email marketing mastermind program that's coming up. Places will be limited. So if you are keen, go to bit.ly slash email mastermind and have a read of all of that there and put in an expression of interest. But that is all for episode 106. I will, of course, be back next Thursday with 107. But I look forward to chatting before then. Join me in my group, um, Like-Minded Business Owners. I'd really love to know from all of my listeners, um, are you keen on writing a book? Um, you know, Perhaps we can uh, be accountability buddies together and get this done in 2021. Um, yeah. Look, I'll be certainly looking out for any of Bev's programs that she'll be running early in the year and see if um, this is something that I can tick off my 2021 list. But have a fabulous week, listener. I'm so happy you joined me for this episode. Um, of course, if you are enjoying the podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this episode maybe with another superstar business owner who also might be interested in writing a book. Um, maybe they've never thought about it and maybe you will pique their interest. Of course, I would love you to leave a rating and a review to show me how much you love this podcast and all this free content, as well as my fabulous guests. But I'll see you next week. But whatever you do, my small business peep, remember, as my opening song says, there is no point in dreaming small. No point in dreaming small.